Good morning. Good morning. A very warm welcome to this online service. A particular welcome if you're someone who doesn't consider themselves part of the church community here, but you're kind of just looking in curious. You're particularly welcome, as I say. The Lent course continues this coming week. We had almost uh, 30 people join the Zoom discussion uh, last Wednesday and it seemed to work quite well. So you're very um, welcome to join in from week two with that. Uh, Louise, I think, is going to start us off this morning with our opening prayer. Uh, dear Lord, as, um, as we worship together this morning, I, I've, I've been looking at the, the snowdrops. Now, one snowdrop is beautiful, but actually when you see them in swathes, there, there, is, a, there is a greater beauty. And Lord, I, I thank you that, in a sense, it's the same with us. We are all individually beautiful to you, but you love us. Uh, to gather and Lord even though we can't gather um, actually together this morning as we gather to worship you sort of together apart Lord would you bless us this morning and would we have that same sense of belonging together and belonging to you in Jesus name Amen Amen
Through it. 
When the storm settles, when the walls fall, when the night passes, you are still God. The creator, the maker, far greater than pain, a pandemic, our savior when it seems there's no ending, the trial after trial that hits us like waves, who you are is proof that one thing remains. And that one thing is constant. 
that one thing doesn't change yesterday today and tomorrow the same in the days things are great and i praise you the same in the days that i make your heart break you're the same consistent continuous constantly here in low valleys high mountains your presence is near in the present i tend to lose sight of that fact but to see where i'm at from my past whew, it's so clear that through it all you are still god the god that's a light to my darkest of thoughts the God that's the map to the wandered and lost. The God that's enough when he's all that I got. The God that sees value and says I'm worth the cost. You're the God that's perfect and loves me though I'm not. You're the God that carries me when my feet hit a stop. You're the God that forgave me when I deserve hell. When you yelled it is finished that night on the cross. Through it all, you are still God. My strongest foundation, you are my still God In the midst of my storm, Lord, you are a still God When the enemy hears how these words instill God He'll attack to remove you, but he cannot steal God You are still God So tell me, what sickness can break us? What fear can invade us? What media can tame us with the stories they make up? What can anyone say, what can anyone do to ever hide that through it all? There's still you. So through all of this, remind us again that you have a plan for your glory in the end. And Lord, until then, all we pray for is patience. Let us be the light to the ones who forgot. Let us remind them that you are still God. Well, both our readings this morning are from the book of Ephesians. The first is chapter 1, beginning to read from verse 17. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put, this work, God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And the second reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, just the first couple of verses. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Good morning everyone. Uh, I first became a, a follower of Jesus Christ uh, back at the beginning of 2007 uh, and it was possibly maybe about six months after that um, I went round to uh, Jez's house for lunch. Um, I don't know if you know Jez, um, back then he was uh, a trainee with Adrian, trainee vicar, um, now he's the vicar of um, Burton Latimer. So uh, anyway I was having lunch with him um, and uh, during that lunch, he asked me uh, what I was going to do with my newfound faith. And um, being honest, I think the question uh, just took me off guard a little bit. I wasn't quite sure, uh, but I had a little think and I, I think I reeled off two or three things which I was considering. And to my surprise, uh, he tore me off a strip. And uh, he said, where is God in those things? He then proceeded to um, give me uh, a little bit of a lecture, which uh, left me stinging a little. Um, and when it was time to go, um, he qualified that by saying that he had prayed earnestly to the Lord um, before I arrived. And he felt that the Lord told him that I needed bringing down a peg or two, probably still do. And um, 
he also felt that the Lord said to him that he was to give me a book which would uh, bring me back up and show me what my Christian life should be like. And that particular book was Sit, Walk, Stand by the uh, Chinese uh, Christian evangelist called Watchman Nee. So anyway, I arrived um, back home after this lunch um, and I was sti uh, still feeling a little raw, um, but uh, I was eager to um, get stuck into this book. Um, and sure enough, after a few pages, um, what Jez had done was totally justified because uh, the truth of Jesus Christ um, was beginning to reveal itself to me. You know, a huge revelation, one might say. Um, and today's talk is going to be based on um, that book. And I'm going to use some passages from it um, because having read it again recently, I realise that it's not just for somebody starting out um, in their faith. It is for somebody um, who's, who's been a follower of Jesus for a while. Um, and I guess the messages that we receive, we might accept them differently now, but, uh, but they never cease to land. Uh, verse uh, 20 of chapter 1. Um, of our Ephesians reading states, he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. So let us first consider this word seated or for our purposes, the word sit. Following Jesus does not begin with walking. It begins with sitting. Uh, when I had replied to Jez um, what I might do with my faith, that implies that I am walking. Had I replied, I'm waiting to see what the Lord says to me, then that would imply that I was sitting. And I was making a common mistake. I was walking in order to sit. And I guess it's a natural reaction when something is new. I was thinking, I must do something to achieve my goal. But following Jesus is a strange business. If we uh, try to do anything, we get nothing. And if we seek to attain something, we miss everything. For following Jesus does not begin with a do. It begins with a very big done. And the Lord God Almighty has done everything for us in his work through his son, Jesus Christ. And we, at the outset, are invited to sit down and enjoy what God has done for us. And certainly not to try to attain it for ourselves. We did nothing whatsoever to save ourselves. We simply laid upon him the burden of our sin-sick souls. To take this first step in our faith, we must say, I can do nothing by myself, but by his grace, God has done everything for me. Following Jesus from start to finish is based upon the principle of utter dependence. He will give us everything, but we can receive none of it unless we rest on him. And sitting is an attitude of rest. Something has been finished, work has stopped, and we sit. God did the work, he stopped, and we must sit. Our new life starts when we learn to sit. 
We let him bear the responsibility. We cease to carry that burden ourselves. God worked for six days and then he rested. On that sixth day, he made Adam, meaning that Adam's first full day on earth was a day of rest. And here too is the gospel. It went a stage further. God completed the work of redemption in his son, Jesus Christ. And we do nothing but enter directly into the values of that completed work. We must see ourselves seated in Christ. God has given us our place of rest. So each time we embark on a new spiritual experience, it must start with an acceptance of what God has done. A new sitting down, if you like. I receive my forgiveness. I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, not by my merit, but by sitting down and resting in the work of Jesus. When the Holy Spirit shows us Jesus and we believe in him, with no further act on our behalf, there begins a life in union with him. Our old person has gone, the one that troubled us for years. It has been crucified with Christ and put away. Our new life has begun and we too sit next to the Son, Jesus Christ, in the heavenlies. We are no longer in bondage to sin, not because of anything we've done, nor even on what God is going to do, but what has already been done in Christ Jesus. When we realise this, acknowledge this, we then find the secret to a holy life. God is so wealthy that his chief delight is to give. His treasure stores are full to the brim. It pains him when we refused to give him the opportunity of lavishing those treasures upon us. If we leave all the giving and the work to God, do we think the result will be less satisfying than if we do some of it? Let us briefly take a peek at the most famous parable, the, uh, the prodigal son, one we all love. The elder son was not in a far off country squandering money, but in actual fact, he was only at home in theory. His position was one that could never be enjoyed as did the prodigal son on his return. No, he was steadfastly clinging on to his works. Stop giving and you will prove what a giver God is. Stop working and you'll discover what a worker God is. The younger son was all wrong until he came home and found rest. And that is where the life of being a follower of Jesus begins. God is waiting for your store of strength to be utterly exhausted before he can deliver you. Once you cease to struggle, he will do everything. So now we know that our spiritual experience must begin with sitting and every task where we walk first will end in disaster. But it doesn't end there. 
Sitting must always be followed by walking. Once we are well rested and have found the strength that has been bestowed on us, then we begin to walk. Walking is the practical outpouring of our heavenly position here on earth. It is clear that the body of Christ is not something remote and unreal to be expressed only in heavenly terms. It is very present and practical, finding the real test of our conduct in relation with others. For while it is true we are heavenly people, it is no use just to talk of a distant heaven. Unless we bring heavenliness into our dwellings, our offices, our shops, our kitchens, and practice it there, it will be without meaning. It is the flow of our own personal lives which give us an indication of how Christ dwells in us. If we are often at loggerheads with each other, or we are constantly burnt up with what is right and wrong, maybe some sitting is required. After all, since the day that Adam took the fruit off the tree of knowledge, man has been engaged in deciding what is good and what is evil. The natural man has worked out his own standards of what is justice and injustice and striven to live by them. Of course, as followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to a different standard. We have realised that the starting point for good and evil is a different one. We do not start from the tree of knowledge. We begin with Christ and the work of the cross. Nothing has done greater damage to our Christian faith than our trying to be right and demanding it of others. We think about whether we've been treated justly or unjustly and use that to vindicate our actions. As followers of Jesus, our standard cannot be right or wrong. Our standard is the cross. With Jesus, it is a question of his Father's grace, not right or wrong. Right or wrong is the principle of Gentiles and tax gatherers. We can't go the extra mile. The extra mile is only typical of the next, the third, the fourth and onwards. When Jesus died on the cross, he was not defending our rights. It was grace that took him there. So to sum up and explain Paul's language in his letter to the Ephesians, he has first learnt to sit. He has come to a place of rest in God. As a result, his walking is not based on his efforts, but on God's almighty inward working. There lies the secret of Paul's strength. So may we be seated with Christ, rest in his finished work. May we see our position clearly, and from this position, may we walk with Christ in his strength. Amen. This morning, uh, as we come to pray, I want to use the passage from Ephesians, and it's Paul's prayer for the Ephesians, and he says how he does hasn't stopped giving thanks for them. And um, as we pray this morning, I, I want us to just have an opportunity to give thanks for each other. Maybe it's someone we've seen recently, maybe it's someone we've seen um, via Zoom on the link course, or 
after the, the, the coffee time at church, or maybe it's someone we've seen in real life, or, or maybe someone we haven't actually now seen for months. Lord, would you bring them to mind? And Lord, let us give thanks for them this morning. Lord, we thank you that in you we are not alone. We are part of your body. And Lord, we thank you for each other. We thank you for each other nearby in our churches and we thank you across the world for your for your church those that are faithful to you let's give thanks this morning and paul prays for the ephesians he prays this he prays that they may that the father may give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that, that they may know him better. And Lord, what a great prayer for us. Lord, would you give us your spirit? Would you give us wisdom and revelation to know you better, to be more certain of who you are, to be more certain in our relationship with you, to grow in that. And Lord, Paul also prays that for, for enlightenment for our hearts. And Lord, would you enlighten our hearts that we may know the hope to which we're called. Lord, um, enable us to see better. Give us revelation in that. Fill our hearts with your purposes for us. Fill our hearts with your hope for us. And Lord, we thank you that we have in, incomparably great power at work in us. We thank you that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in us. Lord, we can't imagine that and help us to see it. Help us, give us revelation to see that. Lord, that we have that same power at work in us. That in you things are possible that might seem impossible. Lord, we thank you for that. And Lord, in this week ahead, I pray, Lord, that we would walk that out in you. Help us to, to be faithful in the big things and faithful in the small things. Help us to see your perspective in our day-to-day -day living. And Lord, um, as, as we carry on in this lockdown, would you bless our nation as the roadmap for the way ahead is given out in the week ahead, Lord, would you bless us? Would we see the way forward? Would you enable our children to get back to school? Would you enable people to start being able to see family again and friends? And Lord, would you, would you be protecting us at this time and strengthening us at, at this time? In Jesus' name, Amen. to see
Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Do keep in touch with us. My email address comes up at the end of the service. Don't forget we have a Zoom uh, kind of coffee gathering at 11 o'clock. Again, the details are coming up. And finally, the Lent course continues. The second teaching video will be published on Monday and the next Zoom discussion will be on Wednesday evening. Details are in the newsletter. Leave you with a final blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Lord, you spoke those words. You spoke so tenderly. Now I choose to believe you love me, you love me, you love me. You're taking me by. Giving me strength to dance again Cause your love changes everything Your love changes everything You are taking me by the hand again You're giving me strength to dance again Cause your love changes everything Your love changes everything